Right, uh, Air Arms TX200. I've been asked quite a few times about the strip down, uh, in particular getting the um, the full length bowel shroud off, which some people think is an impossibility, and Air Arms often tell you it is. It isn't. Uh, a few of the messages that you'll see today may look a bit aggressive, but if you control the heat that I'm going to use to set that shroud off and use correct soft your vice, uh, blocks of wood, that is, set the barrel out. Action's out the stock, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take the trigger guard off at the back. You need to get the trigger guard off to access the stud that holds the trigger unit in. Now this is clamped fairly tight with fabric soft jaws in the vise. doesn't need to be extremely tight. You're going to crush your cylinder if you do overdo it. Stud here bolt even that's holding your trigger assembly in at your rear. I'm just going to loosen that off. Now you, you, nothing's going to spring out at this point. Give it a couple of turns and at which point you should be able to just put a little tiny bit of pressure on the rear block and when you put that pressure on that should be finger tight. Provided nobody's put a monstrous great spring in there it's not going to throw you across the workshop or shoot into your wrist. There's the trigger unit out with the block and then I'll just use a small punch to draw back the standard spring and the steel guide. On this one that will be discarded and replaced with a Delrin one, a bit better fit, rattles around in there, we don't want that. Now your bear trap, pretty simple, you tap that out from the bottom. Give it a couple of taps, keep your fingers on the other side of it and take the pin out. Keep your punch in there because when you lift that there is a pesky little spring. Hopefully you can see that inside the lever that tends to fly across the workshop floor and really wind me up. So your bear trap's out now. Next job we want to get the cocking arm and link arm away from the unit. I'm going to use and the calipers work. It's a four mil punch. Just try and do a bit of a contortion act. Now this pin shouldn't be tight at all. Once again, a couple of little tabs and you should be able to take it out by hand. Remove that, there's nothing under tension here. And then slide the assembly down. Just that little bit of pressure on the vise you can see does actually press in the walls of the comp tube. Once you slide, slid it down, arc your cocking arm upwards and the hook at the end will come out of the shoe. You can then pull the shoe out and extract your comp tube. On these things, as standard, they will have uh, obviously a piston in. This one hasn't because uh, it's already in, 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 in a 10% state of strip. So, on this particular gun, the shroud's coming off and it's getting replaced with an aftermarket one, probably fleeted, vented. First of all, we take out the little plastic plenum attachment that sits in the end with a screwdriver slot in it. Use a coin if you haven't got a decent sized screwdriver because they do damage very easily. There's nothing inside there to worry about. On the Prog Sport there is this plastic caps that will melt during the process that we're about to do. For this I have some uh, 
little pieces of oak that basically I've drilled through and then cut in half. So as you can see now, and this needs to be tight at this point so as you can get it, you're not going to do any damage. I've drilled this hole out in the oak to 20mm. I've then cut down which is subtracted another 3mm for the width of the blade. This is the bit that a lot of people may find a bit unnerving. I'm using a mat gas on a rotten burger and basically I'm just going to apply an even heat up and down the barrel. There is a pesky little stud about two inch from the end of the main cylinder. If you leave that in during this process you're in a world of pain because you're going to cause a lot of damage to the barrel underneath. Straight away I'm just going to put a little bit of heat on that. When our air arms put these on um, I'm under the impression that what they do is they smother them in a bond lock and then slide this round on uh, which is basically why it appears you can't buy an air arms barrel without buying the shroud. A little tiny bit of heat there and you can actually see bits of bond lock coming out. I don't know whether you can get it on there but that stud, if you try and take it out without the bond lock it will more than likely round off. So what I'm going to do, a little bit of even heat Now the barrel in there isn't going to work with this kind of treatment the heat will now be going through the tube heating up the locking compound you're then going to get a slowdown of the transfer of heat because obviously you've got a gap there Let's see if I'm going to better image of what I'm doing there it does seem extremely aggressive but it's the only way to get these shrouds off. Indication that the lock tight in there is giving up the ghost and letting go. It's very unlikely you're going to get this to happen. I've heard the guys doing it over a cooker hob. Uh, as far as I can see, you're not going to get that kind of centralised or even heat. So I wouldn't advise trying it, to be honest. Um, if you do get to the point that you've completely unevenly heated it, you do stand a chance of getting hot spots and doing damage to the barrel inside. giving up the ghost there. Just grab myself a little rag so I can get a good hold on it. And there it goes. So give it a tug back. As you can see it does powderise the bond lock that they've used. So I'll twist and pull at the same time. And off comes your shroud. I'll re-clamp the barrel now and I'm going to clamp it pretty close up and at this point I am going to do it very tight now I'll have to be quick so I'm running out of video Sam 17mm deep impact socket hex where are you there you go. Now what I've done, I have reduced the outer diameter of the socket to 22.2 millimeter. If you want to do this job and you haven't got the tools to reduce it, and you're in the UK, I'm happy to stick it on the lathe for you for a tenner. The nut in there doesn't need heat. I'm using an air knocker. If you've got a friend who's got a decent snap on, battery powered knocker, that will be fine carefully slide that down 
make sure it's over the nut if it's a second hand gun double check there's no pellets jammed around the nut and that's off they're not tight somebody once told me they tighten them with a vengeance as far as I'm concerned it's a lie you just need to get that hit on them to get them off then we're just gonna hopefully we've got time a little bit of heat round here because you're locked out them in there too. And you've got exactly the same scenario where as soon as that lock tight in there gives way, out comes your barrel. Like I said, if you're having a full caustic black job or in this case this is going to be Serical. I would rather these guns were completely dismantled than taking the risk of caustic salts wedging themselves in there and then you spend the rest of your life with them rusting from the inside out. See the smoke on the inside now. You can see the smoke now. Locked out, it's given way. And we can just once again twist and out she comes that's a complete takedown obviously these small screws that hold your bear trap lever once again get the right side screwdriver in there and a little tiny bit of heat just to break the factory lock tight and in there these are notorious for rounding off because they're in there tight and the lock tighted in uh, courtesy of the manufacturer but what you can see from this when I do these as a carbine uh, a lot of people think that it, it, it's detriment to accuracy because I'm cutting the barrel down but inside your shroud that's all you've got so as a factory they're, they're a very short barrel inside that'll turn up absolutely beautiful on a lathe um, we can actually we can get it in a good camera angle which I probably can't so your barrel starting here you can see how much shroud carries on beyond the end of your barrel so when I carbine them I'm going to cut the shroud from the back and slide it right back down there so you end up with a little tiny stumpy little gun but you've not touched the barrel at all right well I hope that was uh, I hope that was useful I'll try and clean it up and, and, and edit all the bullshit out before I upload it happy to take the abuse of, of attacking what was a perfectly good air rifle with a blowtorch but sometimes it's just the only way guys have a wonderful day